Okay. Afternoon, everyone. Afternoon. I was having a link problem. I don't know if that was only me or. No, there's a, there's been a few people having a, a little bit of a technical difficulties getting in. I, uh, I think we have majority of people here. So we'll go ahead and uh, get this started. So first I'd like to say uh, welcome. And uh, thank you everybody who is uh, joining us today for the Fiscal Year 21 Spouse Symposium. Uh, first, like to uh, give congratulations uh, to you on your spouse's selection to Chief Petty Officer. Uh, my name is Chief Rodney Barnett. Been in the Navy for 22 years. Uh, initially came in as an aviation electrician, uh, working on fighters out in China Lake, California. Uh, that's where I discovered my love for flying and I uh, got picked up to be a Naval Air Crewman, uh, where I then was stationed at Tinker Air Force Base in late 2001. I uh, left out just for a little bit, went to Bahrain for a year, uh, came back to Oklahoma for some recruiting, where I met my lovely wife here, Misty. Um, we have two children, uh, our son, Ryan, who is 18, and our daughter, Katie, who is 11. Um, I've done a tour at VQ4, VQ3, VQ7, and now I'm back to VQ3 again. Um, for VQ3, um, you met during the meet and greet about two weeks ago. Uh, we have our commanding officer, uh, Peter Haynes, and our executive officer, Roger Davis. And here with us today as well is Command Master Chief, Ebony Pinnock. Um, also with us today um, is going to be our Takamo season lead uh, for this one is Senior Chief John Skipper. Uh, we have our VQ3 uh, committee season leads, Chief Roy McDuffie and Chief Keir Christensen. So thank you to them for joining, as well as all the spouser sponsors, sponsor, uh, Sponsor spouses who are with us here today as well. Um, today, we're just going to be uh, briefly talking a little bit about the history of the chief, um, some things that you may have already seen, but to expect during the season, uh, some tips uh, to help you thrive and exploring the role as a chief spouse. Uh, we'll touch just uh, briefly on the pinning ceremony. Uh, do a little bit of a digital fashion show, and then move over to some question and answer and discussion. So talking a little bit about the history of the Navy chief, the term chief was first used in June 1776, uh, but the Navy didn't actually establish the pay grade of chief petty officer until April 1st, 1893 which is now the chief's birthday. So in the beginning, the commanding officers were authorized to promote deserving sailors to chief petty officer. Uh, today, that process has changed dramatically. Um, a charge book was used to prepare first classes by recording uh, information passed down by chiefs about responsibilities, leadership, accountability, uh, and supporting the chain of command. So as no doubt that you've already seen, the process is a little bit different, um, but we've kept much of the heritage um, to help prepare the selects for what is about to come. So some things that are coming and kind of what to expect is uh, your spouse is gonna be busy, 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 as I'm sure you've already seen. Uh, they're going to feel overwhelmed, um, maybe not their usual selves, 
um, they may seem stressed and exhausted at times. Um, I, I know for us, when I was going through my season, uh, there was times when I would call up Miss D and, and talk to her, uh, just see how things were going um, and kind of catch up on the day because uh, we did have those longer days. And, uh, you know, she was asking, you know, what I was doing, how things were going. And I was just at such a loss. I, I wasn't real sure exactly what I was doing. Um, so she would start asking me about taskers and, you know, how I'm progressing on it um, and really kind of getting me back on track um, to, to help guide me um, to get through that season. Um, and it was just a, a tremendous help um, as a lot of people in the mess who were watching me go through it uh, can test to. Um, she, she definitely helped me out a lot. Um, so just, uh, you know, as, as you're talking with your spouse and, and your partner, um, help to, to kind of encourage them and, and get them back on track and just letting them know that it's going to be okay and we're going to make it. Uh, as I'm sure you, you've seen and, and they've talked about, um, they're going to have some taskers. Uh, the taskers are going to vary. Um, as you can see on this slide, some of the different things, the, the charge books, which they are uh, very diligently working on right now, uh, getting them all covered, pages numbered, and, and everything else. Uh, these charge books are, are what, uh, as I kind of explained in the past, they're going to go to the different chiefs. Uh, looking for a charge and look for those words of wisdom to, to pass down and, and help them, you know, throughout life. This charge book is, is something that uh, they will more than likely, without a doubt, carry for the rest of their life, um, you know, as, as they go through and, and they put it back in you know, what we call our, our vessel, um, which is the boxes you can kind of see that they're carrying and, and some of the different designs. Um, they may store it in there throughout the year and as season comes back around, uh, go back in, take a look at it and reflect on some of that wisdom um, and then help them throughout the, the rest of their career. Um, the uh, other picture on the uh, bottom left of the uh, slide there is a picture of the hat box. Um, so encased in, in there is going to be what we uh, refer to as our big hat. Um, and it's just something to, to help protect it, keep it covered, and uh, give, give a nice showcase um, for what they have worked so hard for. So some of the, the uniform requirements and, and financing options, they, they've gone through their uh, fittings now um, and, and talked about some of those options. Um, there are no real like sea bag requirements that you may be used to. Um, it is good to, to have those uniforms for whenever an event may came up, you're ready for it and, and are already prepared. Uh, the cost of uh, the chief season, uh, possibly the uh, pay commencement and some uniform allowances. So I would like to say, as, as we talk about um, these tasks during the season, uh, some of the tasks are gonna require them to uh, procure materials for it. You know, their charge books, the, the vessels and the hat box. Um, none of these projects or these tasks should be coming out of your own bank account. Um, if you do end up going out and, and purchasing something, uh, please reach out and let us know um, and hold on to your receipt um, so that we can get you reimbursed. But there should be no additional cost uh, or financial burden due to the season. Um, as far as when you may be getting uh, paid for chief, um, typically the way it goes is uh, after pinning, which is, COVID's kind of changed things around. Typically it's gonna be September 15th 
um, the top 3% within their selection group, their peer group is gonna be getting paid. And then 3% uh, for the consecutive months each month. And then by September 15th come next year, the remaining will be getting paid for uh, their chief's pay. The moment that they get paid for their chief's pay is when they will get their uniform allowance for chief. Um, so you're still waiting and there is a uniform allowance that you're typically used to. You may still see that one, um, but your new uniform allowance will occur when you start getting paid. So if your spouse starts getting paid in March, your uniform allowance each year will come in March. So my name is Misty, and um, we are going to talk about some spouse tips for not just surviving, but thriving during chief season. And we're going to talk about exploring your new role as a chief spouse. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to let you advance slides for okay. me when it's time. <laughs> so you have already gotten a little bit of a taste of what season can do to your spouse. And you may think, Gosh, this competent person that I've been married to for so long, this experienced sailor has lost their mind. Um, you might find that they're wandering around in a fog, or maybe they're coming home and they're cranky. Um, it doesn't hurt to, to remind them, I'm not your sailor. I'm not part of your air crew or whatever, and remind them that um, you kind of are their anchor at this point. So remember to be supportive. They do need that encouragement. They're, they're kind of, um, they're a little bit adrift right now as they're trying to process everything that they're experiencing during their initiation. Uh, as far as being supportive, I want you to remember that as chief spouses, you need to support one another as well. And as genuine spouses, we are here for you as well. Um, if you need to vent, if you have an issue that you think might be able to help you with, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, your spouse sponsor is going to be a great asset to you if you need anything. Don't hesitate to reach out to them. We would encourage you to get to know your, your fellow spouses from season. Um, exchange phone numbers, exchange email addresses or whatever. That way you guys are creating your own network. As your spouses go through their season, they're learning to become this cohesive family in the mess. They will join with everybody else in the mess, but you guys are experiencing your own season and that's gonna, there's gonna be some special bonds there um, between the newly selected uh, chiefs um so don't hesitate to to create your own family with the their spouses um remember that you need to be a good listener they don't always need you to help with problem solving but just to be there and to listen to what's going on like give them an opportunity to vent um and and you will find that um season season can be hard or it can strengthen what's going on in your lives and your marriages if you communicate. That was the experience that we had um, because we do live so far away from base and there was so many hours that they were putting in. Um, my husband was not home during the week. He would stay with another select and we would get those five, maybe 10 minute phone calls a night to figure out what was going on. Um, I'd get to vent about my day and he'd vent about his and we'd talk about upcoming events or tasks, you know, what he was learning in his PQS and on the weekends he would be home. So we definitely learned to step up our communication game. And as a family, I would, I would advise that you do the same. I know some people's family dynamics are different. I have had people say, no, it's okay. They're, they're good. They do their thing. I do my thing. And, and it's cool. Whatever works for you, but, um, you know, don't, 
don't let communication fall through the cracks during season. Um, and we're going to remind you to be patient. There's a lot of things that are going on for, for your selects right now. Um, they're they're going to come home. They may be, they may be short. They may be cranky. They may be forgetful. You ask them to pick up milk on the way home and they may completely blank on it and get home. And you're like, what's going on? Where's my milk? Blow it off. Just remember that this too will pass. Um, and you know, there are times in your life where you have struggled with a heavy load and I'm sure that they gave you some exceptional grace. Just remember that that's what they need right now. Um, so be, be willing to overlook a plethora of, of flaws at this point. Um, it, you don't, they don't always have to struggle through this together or alone, alone together with, with other selects. They can incorporate family, family members. Um, I know our experience was as they were learning, um, learning chants and learning different songs and, and, and learning, <laughs> learning all of these things that they had to memorize. At one point, I think our daughter, who was probably, I don't know, she was seven, eight at the time, definitely learned all of the songs that Rodney had to learn because he would practice it at home, um, worked on things like the egg division as, as a family. And that was a great way for us to spend time together and kind of learn a little bit about what was going on in, in his day and things like that. Um, your spouse probably comes home and really unloads and tells you, well, this is what I've got to do. This is this task. This is that task. And I just don't understand these chiefs. And they're just, wow. What we need you to know is above and beyond everything else is to trust the mass. The Navy has been building chiefs for a long time. There is a method to this madness. Um, obviously, as much as I would like to give you all the secrets, that's something that you and your spouse are going to have to go through and learn together. But trust the mess. Trust your spouse's sponsor. Trust all of the other chiefs that are working with your spouse through initiation to get them where they need to be. They have to um, come to a conclusion of a mindset change. You need to understand that you're no longer married to a first class sailor. You're married to a select. And hopefully at the end of season, you will have the privilege of pinning your new chief. And it's it's not just their own achievement, but it's it's the, the buildup and the creation that they get from their, their chief's mess. So So we're going to talk about um, your role as a chief spouse. Number one, you need to understand that as a spouse, as that anchor, as that backbone of the home, you are going to be priceless to a successful chief. And that's what we want to see your select spouse become is a successful chief. You, as, as, as that, you know, as an asset, an asset to your chief, you will also be valued by the mess. Um, your families are important. You're important um, because we know that at the end of the day, all of these chiefs are going to go home to their families. Um, and what's going on, the dynamics in your home, and you know whether whether you've had a hot water heater break and and you're calling your spouse, going, "I need you to come home and deal with this." Blah blah blah. The mess is going to say, "You know what?" Your family is a priority because your family backs you up as well. So take the time, um, you know, to to care for your family. Ness is going to understand that. We also need you to understand that you're not um, just a face in the crowd anymore. As your spouse grows and becomes accepted, pinned um, as a chief, you're going to be you're gonna be looked at as a role model to some of these junior enlisted spouses. Um, 
So we definitely, we don't want a cookie cutter spouse. We want you to um, be who you are, embrace your individuality, but keep in mind that there are going to be times where there will be eyes on you. And so to that end, um, you know, make sure that, that you're setting a good example and that, you know, we know you're a civilian, you are not in the military and, um, you know, to that end, the military is not necessarily going to dictate to you what your behavior should be. But remember that what you do will be a reflection on your spouse. So as a reminder, just, you know, always be true to yourself, but, but keep in mind that there will now be, there will, there will now be honestly more eyes on you. So you can use this opportunity to, um, to volunteer more, to become more active in um, the lives of um, those, not just spouses in the mess, but you know, for your junior sailor families. Um, and, and you can always take a supportive role in um, basically just showing support to command policy, especially now with COVID and the state of the world as it is. We all know there's a lot of stress um, it's, it's just a tense situation. You can use your position to encourage and to build others up, um, around you. So um, is there anything else that you would like to add to that? Okay. Um, so with the, the pinning ceremony, um, right now we're looking January 29th, uh, for a pinning ceremony. Um, like I say, this is typically a, uh, a large gathering um, in a, a very, you know, as, as the word says, ceremony, but um, it's, it's a huge uh, event. Um, and that is the moment when Select is finally getting pinned, getting to wear those anchors and donning that big hat, walking the, the red carpet. Um, the event will, will change up uh, just a little bit due to um, COVID. However, you know, there is still a ceremony um, very long waited for. Uh, it's a, uh, tends to be a, an emotional event um, just because, you know, going through the season, um, all the things that you've been going through and, and building up to a, a moment. Um, so, yeah. Uh, time is, is still yet to be uh, determined, um, but it is a, uh, a very long awaited uh, getting to process uh, and very emotional, but yeah. Bring your Kleenex, um, bring, bring your cameras. You will definitely want some memories from that event. So we're going to talk about dressing to the uniform. And the big question for new spouses is always, what should I wear to this event? So we're going to look at a few slides that are going to give examples um, of appropriate spouse attire that dresses to the uniform of the occasion. Okay, you can see um, male and female versions of the khaki uniform. This is a versatile uniform. Um, that can take you from um, an everyday service uniform to um, more of a ceremonial. And you will see that definitely as, as time goes on. I don't know what this year holds as far as khaki ball. I'm going to assume that, um, you know, that is something that we'll have to have to see in the future. But um, just remember that as you dress to the uniform, whether it be for a lady or a gentleman, you can always wear um, business attire can have your slacks and your button down as you can see on the on the top for khaki ball uh, for the ladies you can wear a nice um, I don't know church church appropriate dress you may want to get a little more glitzy you, you can always wear a pantsuit the gentleman you can see um, with a jacket um, you choose to wear a tie, that is definitely your option. Um, 
Khaki Ball is an opportunity for you to celebrate with your new chief and to um, get to be welcomed in officially by the mess and to to enjoy enjoy a night of revelry. We want you to keep in mind, not just with khaki ball, but with any event, um, you know, bear in mind who you may, who, you, who, your, <laughs> who your audience may be. You want to keep that in mind. Um, or ladies, we want you to remember your hemlines and your necklines. Um, you may want to get out and dance. And if you're dancing, you don't want to worry about um, Photographer. photographers um, that, that may be taking an unflattering angle, whether you're leaned one way or the other too far. Um, I'm not real sure that there's a delicate way to put that, but just yeah. always keep in mind uh, where your hemline and your neckline falls um, because you, we want you to be individual and express your own fashion tastes, um, but to still be able to be respectful of the event and those around you. Okay. Yeah, so with the, the khakis being versatile, like she was saying, uh, you know, the khaki ball is uh, kind of a more of a, a casual event uh, and a time to, to celebrate, you know, after that painting and a season long uh, versus if you were to move over to the, the Navy Chief's birthday where it's more of a formal, um, still being in the khakis, but it's, it's a little more dressed up, um, still in the same uniform. So there, there's a lot of range in uh, outfits that can go with it. Um, yeah. Okay, now you're seeing summer service whites and some great examples of what to pair with those. Um, again, you're in some business attire or Sunday best, and the summer service whites um, are, are considered to be a little bit dressier than the khakis. Um, and, and when you dress for um, these events, keep in mind whether they are outdoors, indoors, are you, uh, is your spouse attached to um, a ship at that time? Are you, are you going on the boat? What's your weather like? Things like that to consider and your footwear, you wanna make sure a wedge or a flat may be better than, than a high heel that would typically look good with your outfit. These are all things for you just to keep in mind, not just dressing to the uniform, but for the environment that you may be in as you accompany your spouse to these events. So you have dress blues on the top and uh, dinner dress and some more examples. Ladies, you're always free to wear pantsuits, but this is a more formal uniform. So typically you're going to see um, an elegant evening gown, something, something that will have length to it. Again, we talk about um, hemlines and necklines. Remember, you will see uniforms like this at the, um, at the Navy Ball. This is very much a pomp and circumstance uh, type of event. Um, so make sure that as you're selecting your outfit, number one, you will be comfortable. You will find something that, that expresses who you are, but um, dressing to the occasion because it is very formal. These are always the, the great opportunity, um, you know, to, as Misty would say, I need a new dress. Uh, so uh, it's always that opportunity to, to go look for, you know, that, that new dress or, you know, hey, it's, it's time for me to get a new suit, you know, or, well, you're in your dinner, so I'm going to throw on a tux or I'm going to get the, the ball gown out and, you know, uh, show it off. So. It's always an opportunity to, uh, you know, get a new outfit and, and dress up. So uh, that's what we have uh, for you during this symposium. Um, uh, I thank everybody for your time. I open it up now for any questions or, or discussions that anybody might have. So uh, I know through the season, um, you know, like we've kind of talked about, there's there's a lot going on. Um, you may not have any questions right now and you might 
think of something later on, like, oh, I, I just thought about this. Uh, I, I wish I would have asked. Um, again, if, if you do have any questions, please just feel free to reach out. Uh, we are here to, to help you. Um, you know, we want to make sure that everybody's succeeding. Um, we're all looking forward to, to bringing you into the family. Um, so by all means, just feel free to, to reach out and don't be shy. Um, is the khaki ball usually the day of the pinning or is it usually within the week or I know with the whole situation of COVID going on, do, do we know for sure if it's, is that still in limbo? Uh, it's, it's still in the book. It's, it's not the, the day of the pinning. It's, it's usually going to be uh, a week, maybe two weeks afterwards, uh, it's, but it's usually set up for a later date. So that brings up a good point as far as pinning goes. Um, and obviously things are different this year um, as we try to respect small gatherings and social distancing. Um, typically at, at the pinning ceremony, you are invited to um, have guests. I'm sure that will not be the case this year. Um, but when you're thinking about scheduling, any type of event or a small family gathering or a dinner on the day of pinning, keep in mind that your spouse is going to be recovering from a long season and a usually a very long night the night before. They are going to be tired. They are not going to remember a whole lot of anything other than getting those anchors and getting the big hat. Um, so give yourself, give your spouse a lot of grace that day and don't really try to plan anything on that day other than seeing your spouse pinned um, and taking some great photos. Try to save any small gatherings or, or small family celebrations for the day after because they're, they're just gonna be really tired. They're gonna wanna go home and sleep. That was a great question, thank you. Yes, thanks too for that question. I'll jump in here, Rodney and Misty. Um, in regards to the khaki ball, the khaki ball this year will not be immediately following the pinning. It's not gonna be a week or two weeks, especially with the restrictions we're experiencing now. We were looking to couple it with the CPO birthday ball celebration, which usually falls on or around April 1st. Um, but even by that time, we're really going to be dependent on how the current environment looks like and our ability to gather, if you will. Um, and if it continues on, perhaps we'll go to something that's a bit more smaller and we're able to gather in smaller groups to celebrate compared to a larger gathering. And we typically host um, well over 100 for that particular event with all chiefs, spouses, and significant others, and the new chiefs um, celebrating them and their um, promotion, their pinning ceremony. So uh, 2021 is gonna be looking a bit different, but your, your spouse will have that information for you as soon as we do. Thank you, Ebony. Any other questions? Just a little bit. Okay, uh, if there's no other questions, like I say, if, uh, if you do have any questions, feel free to, to bring it up. Uh, we are here and willing to help in any way that we can.